Today we're going to look at lesson six. This is still in section 1.5 of your textbook and we're going to solve compound inequalities. Make sure that you have your notebooks with you ready to go. You're taking notes um, and doing examples as we go along. Remember you um, can pause the video and rewind it whenever you need to because I am going to move a little bit faster in the video than I normally would if we were in person. We're going to start with vocab today because if we're going to solve compound inequalities, you need to know what a compound inequality, inequality is. If we were in person, I would ask you guys about compound words. I would say, what's a compound word? What's an example? And hopefully you all would be able to yell some out. But since we can't do that, I'll just tell you some. Compound words are words like hot dog, football, cupcake, butterfly. You have two separate words that are put together to make a new word. And that's a, kind of what a compound inequality is. A compound inequality is when two distinct, in, distinct inequalities are joined by the words and or or. So you're going to have two separate inequalities. They're going to be combined together into one problem by one of those given words. Okay, we're going to look at some examples now. We're going to start with or compound inequalities. I'm going to do number one with you, and then I want you to try number two on your own and then check your answer with me. The actual inequalities that you're going to have to solve for your compound inequalities are going to be pretty simple. Um, your math Excel work keeps them pretty um, easy to solve, so I'll keep the examples that way too. The main thing that we want to focus on here is that compound component. They're together. On the, the graphs, they're going to be um, on the same number line. So number one, let's solve the first inequality. K plus 3 is less than 0. So subtract 3 from both sides, and we get K is less than negative 3. Or, okay, let's solve the other one. We add 5 to both sides and get K is greater than 9. Okay, so there are two solution sets. Now let's put them on a number line. In Math Excel, your number lines are going to be made for you. And it might even be multiple choice in there. But we're going to graph them together in our notes. This isn't brand new information for you. You've done this. Um, in Algebra 1, maybe even before that. I know that I did it with you in Algebra 1, so this should just be an easy review. Okay, k is less than negative 3. We need to go back to our inequality notes that we wrote down um, in the last section. So less than is an open circle, and we need the numbers that are less. So numbers that are smaller are on the left, okay? Then we need to do the other inequality on the same number line. So we have K is greater than 9. Greater than is also an open circle, and we want numbers that are bigger, so we go to the right. Okay, so those are both parts of our answer. We've got the inequalities and the graph. Now pause the video. Take just a second to try number 2. Okay, let's see how you did. So on the first one, we will divide by negative 3 and get x. Ooh, do I keep or flip the symbol? I flip it because we divide by a negative. We bring down or. On the other inequality, we divide by 4, and we get x is greater than or equal to 5. So there are our two inequalities. Let's put them on a number line. Negative 2 is on this side. 5 will be somewhere on that side. What kind of circle does less than have? Open. And numbers that are less are on the left. Okay. X is greater than or equal to 5. What kind of circle? Closed. Good. And we'll go to the right because the bigger numbers are on the right. So, again... Two parts to our answer there, the inequalities and the graph. Okay, here's example number three. These two inequalities have a little bit more work to do. They're two steps instead of one steps each. We'll do this one together, and then I'll give you one to try on your own. So first we have 8n plus 3 is greater than 67. So let's solve that. 
First, we subtract 3. We have 8n is greater than 64. We divide both sides by 8. And we get n is greater than, oh, not 64. That would not make any sense. n is greater than 8. Okay. Or let's solve the other one. 3n plus 7 is less than or equal to 16. So we subtract 7 and have 3n is less than or equal to 9. We divide by 3 and get n is less than or equal to 3. So there's the first part of our answer. Now let's put it on a number line. Now, on this one, we have 8 and 3, but you have to think about a number line. Which one would come first? 3 and then 8, okay? So for 8, it's n is greater than 8. Greater than has an open circle, and we go to the right. n is less than or equal to 3. Less than or equal to has a closed circle, and you go to the left. Okay, here's example number four. Negative 3x minus 2 is greater than or equal to 10. And x plus 8 is less than 14. So go ahead, take just a second and try that. Oh, actually, so sorry guys. I just caught a mistake. That is supposed to be greater than, not less than x plus 8 is greater than 14. So that's why it wasn't making any sense to me. Now, pause the video and give this a try. Okay, let's see what we should have. So on the first one, we're going to add 2 to both sides. We have negative 3x is greater than or equal to 12. Divide by negative 3. And when we divide or multiply by a negative, we flip that symbol. So we have x is less than or equal to negative 4. Or the other one, we're going to subtract 6. And we get x is greater than, I mean, subtract 6. Guys, I'm losing my mind today. I apologize. I don't know what is with me. Subtract 8, and we get 6. So x is greater than 6. And pause for just a moment. Okay, sorry about that. Um, let's graph our solutions on a number line. So x is less than or equal to negative 4. We've got negative 4. What kind of circle is it? Close. And we're going to the left because that's less. We have x is greater than 6, that's an open circle, and we go to the right because that's where numbers are larger. There are the two portions of our answer. So you will have some or problems in math Excel to work on. Some of them you might have to just do the solution. Some of them you have to do the solution and graph. Um, just pay attention to what it's asking for. Okay, now we're switching gears just a little bit, and we're going to look at and compound inequalities. So and are a little bit different than or. If you notice, and let me flip my page back real quick just so we can see. So all of your or inequalities, they're separate. You've got here or here. On your a number line, they're also separate. All of your shading or your arrows are going opposite. They're going to the outsides of the number line. Okay, and so an easy way to think about this is if I'm offering you a snack and I say you can have cake or cookies, then you get one or the other. So, like, your solution could be here or could be there. Okay, it could be one or the other. All right, with and, it's a little bit different. If I say that you can have cookies and cake for a snack, then you get both together. They're put together. So, some of your AND problems look like this. They're squished together in one long inequality, but we can look at it piece by piece and still see two separate inequalities. So, like on number one, if I cover up this inequality, negative 4 is less than x plus 6. Perfectly fine inequality. 
I can cover up the other side. X plus 6 is less than or equal to 5. Perfectly fine. But since this, ex this expression is the same, we can squish it together and do a little bit less work. Okay, so some of your problems will look like this. And if they do, look at that middle expression and think about how you would solve it. So if I cover up one inequality and I just have this, what would I do to get x by itself? I would subtract 6. So I'm going to subtract 6. And if I do it to one side, I have to do it to the other. Well, how many sides do I have? 3. So I have to subtract 6 from all 3 parts. Negative 4 minus 6 is negative 10. It's less than. Those cancel. And we've got x. It's less than or equal to 5 minus 6 is negative 1. Okay? There you go. You've got your inequality answer. Now, let's put that on a number line. All right? When we look at your inequality here, x is between negative 10 and negative 1. All right, that means negative 10 is smaller than x, and x is smaller than or equal to negative 1. x is literally in between those two numbers. So when we graph that on the number line, our solution set is literally going to be between those two numbers. All right, and we can look at it a couple different ways. You could also break this inequality up into two smaller ones. You could look at this half, and if we turned that around, it would be x is greater than negative 10. And if we look at this one, it says x is less than or equal to negative 1. All right, so that means the same thing, okay? Just two different ways to write it. So whichever way you want to think about it, let's graph it. So x is greater than negative 10. So we have an open circle on negative 10, and we're going to go to the side that's greater. x is less than or equal to negative 1. So that's a closed circle, and we're going to go where it's less. And what do you notice about the shading or the arrows? They meet each other in the middle. Okay. So just like up here we said x is literally between negative 10 and negative 1. Our solutions are literally between negative 10 and negative 1, okay? And this is just another way to write it if it helps you. Now, pause the video and give number 2 a try. See what you think, see what you can do, and then we'll check our answers. Okay, hopefully you've had a chance to look at, them on, look at it on your own. All right, you can cover up one side of the inequality, decide what you would need to do to solve it. All right, we'll add four. And we have to do it to all three sides here. Negative three plus four is one. It's less than or equal to m, less than or equal to three. So m is between one and three. Okay, so let's make our number line. got a 1, we've got a 3. What kind of circle do we need on 1? Closed. What about 3? Also closed. And m is between the two numbers, so our solutions have to be between those two numbers. Okay, another thing, if that doesn't make sense to you, break this up and make two smaller inequalities. We've got m is less than or equal to 3. Or 1 is less than or equal to m. If we turn that around, it looks like that. Okay, and what I want you to notice about your graphs for and is that they meet in the middle. So you've got your two dots, and instead of your lines going on the outside before, now your line is on the inside. It's connecting them. Remember that cookies and cake, they're together. Okay, so your solutions are together in the middle. They meet. Okay, here's another and inequality. It's a little bit different. They are connected by and, so they're still and but they're written separately, okay? And that's fine. We're going to work them out the same way we did before with the or. Solve this one, solve this one, and then we'll put them together on the number line. All right, so 2x is greater than 2. How can we solve that? Divide by 2, and we get x is greater than 1. And solve the other one. We can divide by 2. 
and get x is less than 2. Okay, so again, a couple different things. You can put them straight on the number line, 1 and 2. Or what most of your math Excel problems are going to want you to do is turn these two separate inequalities into one long inequality. So this is what you're going to do. Your variable is x, so you're going to put x in the middle. Right? x is smaller than 2, so you're going to say less than 2. And it's x is bigger than 1, so you're going to switch it around like that. So you're going to turn x is greater than 1 and x is less than 2 into this inequality. Okay, So you will have to be able to do that on Math Excel. Now let's graph it. Open on 1, open on 2, line in the middle. So this time I'm going to box that and this. Just so you know, that's probably what your Math Excel is going to want you to answer. Okay. Okay, here's our last example of the day. Take just a second, solve these two inequalities, try to put them into one inequality answer there, one compound inequality answer, and put it on a number line. Okay, hopefully you've had a chance to give these a try. Let's solve them, check your answers. And the first one we'll divide by three and we get x is greater than or equal to negative four. And on the other one, we divide by 8 and get x is less than or equal to 3. Let's go ahead and create um, that squished together inequality. We have x in the middle. We know it's less than or equal to 3. So that means that negative 4 is less than or equal to x. And if we put it on our number, number line, we've got a negative 4 and a 3. Both circles are closed and our solutions are in the middle. Okay, there you go. Make sure you've tried all the examples, written them down, um, finish the video, and then go practice in Math Excel. Have a great day.